Hey, are you tired of the endless debate about which gaming PC is the best? Well, it is time to cut through the noise and focus on the PC components that really matter, specifically the graphics card and processors. That being said, let us get started as I break everything down for you. Have you ever wondered whether selecting an AMD or Intel processor actually makes a difference? Or if the hype around NVIDIA graphics cards versus AMD ones is justified? So not only can I help you avoid brand wars, but I also have the answers to make sure you get the best gaming experience possible. Alright, let's talk processors. Ignore the brand hype, just ask yourself, what model suits my gaming needs? Because here's the deal, your favorite game does not really care if your system is AMD or Intel powered. It all comes down to selecting the powerhouse with future-proof upgrade options that offers you the best value for your money. So while the processor brand generally does not matter, the graphics card brand actually does. You've got two main brands here. You've got AMD graphics cards and you've got Nvidia graphics cards. Now in terms of performance per dollar, you will find that you get the best performance from an AMD graphics card, but Nvidia may have a few gadgets that are interesting for you depending on what you do on your PC. For example, if Fortnite is one of your main games, generally I'm going to recommend Nvidia graphics cards because Fortnite just seems to have far fewer stability issues with Nvidia compared to AMD. Of course, it will run completely fine on AMD, you just need a better experience with Nvidia. This is more of a Fortnite issue than it is an AMD issue. Now if streaming is a huge thing for you, again, I'm going to recommend the Nvidia graphics card because Nvidia graphics cards allow you to use the power of your stream. You're generally going to get better and better quality compared to AMD. Now when you're choosing a processor and graphics card, you need to balance them depending on the games that you play as well as the resolution of your monitor. And I'll show you what I like to call CPU and GPU balancing. There are two rules you need to remember. Now the first one is that the processor generally does not care what resolution you're playing in. Now in this example, we've got a processor and a graphics card running a game. And as you can see, the processor is able to hit the same FPS which is 200, whether it's in 1080p, 1440p, or 4K. Whereas the graphics card is able to hit different levels of FPS depending on the resolution. Now the second rule you need to remember is that you're only going to get the FPS that the weakest link can provide. So the graphic card can hit 300 FPS. You're only going to get 200 FPS because the processor is only capable of 200 FPS at max. And as you can see in 4K, the graphics card can hit 100 FPS. And although the processor can hit 200 FPS in 4K, you're only going to get 100 FPS because the graphics card is the weakest link. And as you can imagine, in 1440p, since the graphics card and the processor can still hit 200 FPS together, that's an example of a perfectly balanced PC. In the real world, you want your process to be slightly more powerful than the graphics card because if your processor is the weakest link and you start lagging, it feels very stuttery and makes it very hard to aim in games. Whereas if your graphics card is the weakest link, it's only because you get lower FPS, but it still feels very smooth. So there you have it, the secret sauce to crafting the ultimate gaming PC. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Until next time, happy gaming, and may your frame rates be high and your temperatures be low.